Good morning, everyone, and good Shabbos, and a good Arab Rosh Chodesh, because tonight begins Rosh Chodesh Elo. This week's Torah portion, one of the subjects is the laws of kosher, and the Torah tells us how to fish. And the Torah says when it comes to creatures that swim in the ocean, kol ashalos napir v'kaskeses. How do you identify a kosher fish? It has to have fins and scales. If it has both fins and scales, you know it's a kosher fish. Which obviously means that lobsters are not kosher because they have neither fins nor scales. And of course, we don't eat lobster. The question is, why did God create lobsters? What can we learn from a lobster? Even though you can't eat it, you can still learn from lobsters. And it's a very vital and important lesson that we can learn from lobsters, especially as we prepare for the hurricane. What is the lesson we can learn? So the way lobsters are created by God is that they have a very soft and mushy body with a very hard and rigid shell. So the question is, how does the lobster grow? If it has a hard and rigid shell, how does, the, how does the baby lobster become an adult lobster? And the answer is, you can look this up, is that the lobster starts to feel discomfort. It starts to feel a pressure as its body grows. So what does it do? It casts off its hard shell. Now, even though when it casts off its hard shell, it feels vulnerable, and there are a lot of predators in the ocean that would like to kill it and eat it, and the shell is its protective gear, so to speak, but it realizes that in order to grow, it has to cast off its hard shell, grow, and develop a new shell. And then when it feels the pressure again as it's outgrown that shell, it casts it off a second time and a third time, and it does this multiple times. And it takes the risks of feeling vulnerable and exposed in order to get the positive growth. Someone said there's post-traumatic stress and there's post-traumatic growth. So it goes through the trauma of the vulnerability in order to get the positive growth. Now imagine if the, doc, if the lobster was a human being. He would go to his doctor and say, you know, I'm feeling all the stress, I'm feeling anxiety, I'm feeling pressure. He would say, here's a Valium, here's a Percocet, you know, and he'll calm down. And what would happen? He would take these painkillers, feel relaxed, and he would never grow. But because he has to deal with his stress, he's forced to grow as a result. And this is the laws of kosher of this week's parsha. Don't eat the lobster, but learn from the lobster. And as human beings, we can learn a very important lesson. There are certain stresses we can't run away from. One of them is hurricanes. We can run to a different state, but we still have to worry about our possessions, our properties. And it's a healthy stress. Why? Because it's a signal. Just like the growth of the lobster tells the lobster it's time to grow, so too, when we feel anxiety and stress, it tells us we've got to act. And, you know, we as human beings like to feel secure. But when it comes to a hurricane, we just realize we're not in control. And embrace that. Own it a little bit. And say, you know what? I should remember this. I'm not in control. God's in control. And as this week's parasha says, you're children of God. Don't focus on the stress. Focus on your trust in God. He's your father. He cares about you. He'll take care of you. Have faith. Have hope. There's a lot of anxiety in the street now. When you walk in the public, everyone's stressed. Everyone has it on their mind. But there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of prayer. And everyone's saying, oh, I hope this doesn't come my way. I hope we get spirit from this one. And when it passes, let's remember the anxiety, the vulnerability. We're all vulnerable. We may not feel it 365 days a week, a year. But we're vulnerable every day. And we also have to have hope, faith, and trust in God every day and realize He's our Father. And trust doesn't mean it's, we're not going to get damaged. We may get hit, but we'll get through that. God has a plan and we'll work through it. And here's the most, perhaps the most important point. We have to remember this is the time to care about each other. What do people do during preparations of a hurricane? They call their family, they call their friends, they call their neighbors, the elderly people, whoever may need them, and say, I'm looking out for you. Do you want to come with me? Do you have a place? Do you have what you need? And this is the time that we stop being self-centered, we think about those around us. And that's another very important lesson we can grow from this experience. Say, all year round, but especially now, let's look out for others, reach out to others. If you know someone who needs help, call them now. Reassure them, just knowing that you're not in it together, alone. We're all in this together. That in itself is reassuring. That in itself brings a measure of comfort that we're, we're in this together, we'll get through this together as, as a community of South Floridians or wherever we may be. One other point. As we're sitting here on a beautiful Friday, and I hope we'll have a beautiful Shabbat, and people will not stay away from shul. A lot of times before hurricanes, the shuls are empty because everyone's busy getting ready. One of the ways to get ready is to come to shul and daven that we shouldn't have to have the hurricane. So the shul should be full tomorrow, more than usual, because prayer is a big part of it. But right now, as we're sitting here, it's calm, but in the Bahamas, they're getting hit really hard. And they're going to get hit hard unless there's a miracle, right? 
and they're in a much worse position than us because they don't have houses and structures the way we do. And so they're, we need to think about them and we need to pray for them. And if we pray for them, they'll pray for us and God willing, by caring for others, we'll be cared for. And I'll just tell you something very beautiful. Think about the relationship between your two eyes. Your two eyes move together, blink together, sleep together, see together, cry together. They work in sync constantly. They never part. But you know what? The way God created the nose in the middle with the bridge, one eye could never see the other. And that's the power of friendship and caring about others. We may not see the people in the Bahamas and they can see us, but we're in this together. We know that we have the same fate, the same storm that's coming to them is coming to us. And that's what it means to have unity, to work together, even with people we can't necessarily physically see, but to know we're all in this together wherever we go. And with that power of unity and care and love for one another and the power of prayer, faith and trust, let us hope that everyone will be spared. There'll be no, God forbid, fatalities, casualties, damages. Hashem could turn the storm in a different direction. And most importantly, there's the eye of the storm, but there's the eye of Hashem. May the eye of Hashem watch over all of us.